It was a West End battle on the diamond between two formidable teams in an early season clash. Welcome to Sportswire. I'm Will Catterley. Freeman vs. Glenn Allen, the Jaguars of Class 6, entered Tuesday night's road contest on fire. Glenn Allen had scored 24 runs in a shutout over Tucker and also boasted a dominant win over Prince George. Meanwhile, the homestanding Mavericks were fresh off a win over Highland Springs after a season-opening loss to James River. This one would come down to two dynamic starting pitchers, where runs would come at a premium. Ah, the glorious warm weather of springtime in Henrico. Well, just kidding. It was awfully cold last night. Fans bundled up on both sides. Of course, cold weather favors the pitchers, unless they can't control the baseball. That wouldn't be a problem, though, especially since both these pitchers are really good. Daniel, knee neighbor, is only a sophomore. His velocity was off the chart. Strike him out, sit him down in the first. However, Freeman did have a runner on. Stolen base puts a man in scoring position with two outs, and that would lead to this. Ground ball, just make contact. It's a base hit for Ryder Warren of the Storm. RBI single, and just like that, Lee Sowers. Big thing sweet for Freeman gives the Mavs a one to nothing lead. Knee neighbor though, not to be outdone. Strike him out, sit him down. He was massive. Double digit strikeouts in this one. Knee neighbor had a terrific game, but Freeman had a one nothing lead. And one of the reasons why came in good was came in great. Strike him out, sit him down. Number 22 goes mowing down Chase Fultz. Low in the zone, but yeah, that's a strike. Strike him out, end in the side, nothing doing. Now it's knee neighbor's turn. Boy, he pulled the string on that one. Strike him out, sit him down, number 13. Finn Whipple goes down and then got him looking as well. The backwards K. Both these guys were dealing, and I mean dealing. Another strikeout for good. Flipping goes down, strike him out, swinging. Luke Betke, another victim. Knee neighbor, yeah, no chance. Up in the zone gets Charles Martin. And uh, everything looking good for both pitching sets. Remember, Freeman has that one nothing lead. And another K as Vinny Fishy goes down, fishing. And uh, came in good, another K for him. Both these pitchers had double digit Ks, good. Just fastball, well located in the zone. Strike him out, sit him down, knee neighbor. Right back at it, got him again. Still a one nothing score after four innings, only two hits apiece for both clubs. You want more good? He's great! Gets a strikeout once again. And then, you know what? James River ran all over Freeman in the opener. Glenn Allen did not. The pickoff at first base for an extra out, and we know Glenn Allen likes to run the bases. Yes, they do. And then good is great again. Gets a strikeout looking right there. Six strong innings for Cayman Good. Meanwhile, Glenn Allen trying to keep it a one nothing lead. While Glenn Allen could not run, Freeman could, and they took advantage of it. The steal of second, and tell me where you've seen this before. CNI single up the middle. Lee Sowers, who scored the first run, drives in the second. As Henry Britt comes around the score, huge insurance run for the Mavs. They're up 2 nothing later. They get the out in the seventh inning. Again, on the pickoff, they had four pickoffs in the game. However, Glenn Allen off a balk, two runners on. In relief is Ryan Bland. Two men on, only one out. Two men in scoring position, just down two. Big strikeout for Bland. He gets number 22 going, swinging. And that would lead to this. After the chase fold strikeout, guess who's at second base to finish it off? Came in good with the final out, and Freeman gets a big win at home. Final score, Mavs take care of business on a cold spring day. 2-0 is your final. The first inning, I was pretty nervous. I think I walked the first batter, so I was pretty nervous, and then we ended up getting him out off a stolen bag. And then I want to say I, end up, I think I ended up throwing like 82 pitches. And that was good. And I didn't have to throw my curveball, which I wanted to throw my curveball. But I've been throwing fastballs and sliders the whole game. 
to Ladies Lacrosse. We go at Deep Run hosting Glenn Allen. Glenn Allen came out on fire. This is a great match, by the way. The flag goes up, but the shot counts. She shoots. She scores one nothing. Glenn Allen, they had to stop and think about it, but yes, it did count. That was great. Kaplinger, oh, Captain, my Captain. You want more Captain Kaplinger? You got her. She shoots. She scores again. Before you could even think, it was two to nothing. Well, before I could even think, because that's the way my brain works. Here comes Kaplinger again. Still two nothing score. Going to make it three. She goes uh, short corner, finds the back of the net, and it's three nothing. Kaplinger leads the Wildcats with 434 to go in the first quarter still in the first we get into focus and glenn allen finds the net again firing finding the back of the net it's ava walker co-captain my captain ava walker texas ranger and they are now up for zip more from glenn allen this time deep run has answers nice save by the keeper she would be paramount molly cunningham and then on the other side, yeah, there are big saves on both sides. 4-0 after one. Evelyn Toll Springer, another captain. Keeper would play huge in this one. Deep run in the second, though. They would come back. She shoots, she scores. Meredith Teagle. And then moments later, firing, finding the back of the net. It's Charlotte Gentry. And all of a sudden, what was a 4-0 Glen Allen lead has been carved to two actually make that five to two and then watch this off the x the face off the draw whichever you want to call it all the way she scoops it she scores it and georgia swar you haven't heard the last verse five three glenn allen looking to counter and they would firing finding the back of the net who else but gray kaplinger shooting scoring again and then glenn allen Saying deep runs run is done. Well, it was momentarily. Natalie Macklin going on a run of her own. And the Jags back up to a four-goal lead, 7-3. to three. But next quarter, here come the Wildcats. And here they come. I told you to hear more from her. Number 23, shooting, scoring. It's Georgia Soir. Georgia Soir was still not done. That would make it 7-4. to four. Deep run. Still not done. Firing, finding the ball, trickling, trickling into the back of the net. Charlotte Gentry does more damage, and it's seven to five. So, with 6.54 to go in the third, and deep run still not finished. The pass inside, scoop it, score it. Well done, great pass, excellent finish. Georgia Suarez, it's a one goal game. We got a seven to six game going on here and it's anyone's we want 54 to go flipping sides to the fourth on the restart penalty shot she shoots she scores that would tie it at seven charlotte gentry but no it wouldn't i asked the refs after the game they said her momentum carried her body into the crease which is a no-no and that means no goal meanwhile big time stops from this big time keeper, number 33, Evelyn Toll Springer. Toll Springer standing tall. I mean tall. Another big stop in the fourth. Nursing that 7-6 lead, and time would run out on deep run. Toll Springer and Glenn Allen get a big win on the road. Final, Glenn Allen 7, deep run 6. It's back to baseball when we come back. Hermitage puts their bats to work when they travel to Henrico. Plus, Freeman softball looks to put up some crooked numbers when they head to Highland Springs. Highlights are straight ahead. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. boy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to Sports Wire. Little softball action. Freeman Mavs on the road taking on Highland Springs. And the Springers, number 24, Elise Fleming on the mound. And right past third base. That'll go for a double for Sarah Chilton. 
It would lead to this. No score in the first, trying to steal third, and she would get in there. The throw would beat her, but the ball would go into the outfield. Next thing you know, it's a run. Chilton finds home plate, crosses home plate, and the Mavs have the early 1-0 advantage after a half inning of play. Bottom one on the mound, number 19, Caroline Bear. Tell you what, both these teams were hitting the heck out of the softball. That ball is crushed to right center. One run comes around the score, and number 15, Samantha Gethright, and number 16 doing the honors. Nyema Charity, no charity for Freeman on that one, and this one eating it up, getting the out at first, but it goes for a sack. Rafice ground out, RBI ground out, and it's 2-1, and then the boomstick. Ashlyn Porter, say goodbye, because that ball will see ya next time. Porter hits it a quarter mile, and it's a solo shot to give the Springers a 3-1 lead. Going to the second inning, I, uh, you know how runs were at a premium and Glenn Allen Freeman, this one not so much. A lot of hitting going on in this one. Catherine Singh with a double. That would lead to this. Hung up and that eats up the shortstop. One run comes around to score. And they're playing station to station baseball, or softball I should say. Caroline Baird doing the honors on that one. Clean single to center right here off the bat of Ann Keating. Only a freshman. She drives home a run. And uh, Freeman really had the bats going in this and he's going to put up a crooked number. Still not done. Eating up third baseman. Sarah Chilton does it again. Number 16, Sienna Chahori comes around to score. Uh, and yeah, Freeman bats were a plenty. That ball is ball four. It's an RBI. Bases loaded. Ducks on a pound. Pa on a pond. Say that three times fast. Run comes around to score. More from the Mavs. That's a heater. All the way to the fence. One run scored. Here comes two. And the two run triple by Kalen Perks. And it's nine to three. Freeman, they had eight runs in the second. Still not finished. We go to the third. Same score all the way to the wall. Sliding in for a double. It's Ann Keating. Freshman can hit. Caroline Baird back on the mound. And uh, yeah, Highland Springs, they were not done hitting the softball themselves. Elise Fleming helping herself out. That almost went the distance. And then you heard her earlier, Ashlyn Porter, who hit it a quarter mile, hits an RBI single. That's good for a base knock and a run scored. Springer's on the comeback trail. Still not finished. Here comes Highland Springs. That dog will hunt. Run comes around to score. Here comes a second. She will score. And the RB, two RBI single, all of a sudden, looking pretty good. Jaime Gonzalez, the junior. And then that ball's going to get past everybody off the bat, Ada Scott. Ada Scott drives home one. She drives home two. She falls in the third base. A base is clearing triple. Highland Springs would get within one run here as uh, this could have been a sack fly to tie the game. Instead, Freeman alertly on defense gets a runner who did not look to tag up. They get the double play. That is, is as close as Highland Springs would get. Mavs would add on and hang on. 16 to nine is your final. Back to baseball now. It's Henrico at home taking on Hermitage. With uh, number one, Xavion Jackson on the mound. Hermitage ready to run in this one, stealing second base. Jackson, though, pours in strike three to get himself a K, first inning action. Jackson again, this time ball hit to second base. I'm following the guy covering first. Ball gets away from Jackson. Run comes across to score. Hermitage has a one to nothing lead. Jackson, however, comes right back, strike him out, sit him down. Damage contained to just one run. Henrico, by the way, man on second, bottom half of the first. Nicely done by the pit. Getting out of trouble. Next inning. Ooh, nice breaking ball right there for strike him out, sit him down, strike number three, Xavion Jackson. 
got him swinging on that one. As Hermitage goes down once again, Jackson, runner in scoring position for the Panthers, but they do not get a run in the second. So it's still a one nothing game and then great pitching right here. Nice Uncle Charlie curveball, 12 to six, froze the batter. And then Hermitage would put up some big time numbers. Runner in motion at second, forced the defense, got to eat that, could not come up with it cleanly. So runners at the corners for the Panthers. Hermitage going to take advantage. This ball gets away from the catcher. Runner coming home to score, and he does so standing up to zip. Panthers still not finished. Swung on, hit deep to right. He's got it, he's got it, but it ah, goes off the glove. That's going to bring home one run. Here comes another. He's churning around the base paths. All the way to home. Two-run score on the hit to deep right. Uh, number 28 getting the job done as Hermitage adds on to their lead. They were not finished. This one nailed to right, and that'll count as an out, but it would lead to a run. Sacrifice fly, runner from third comes across to score, so Hermitage does some damage. They go to the relief pitching. Number 11 comes in, Dylan Connell. That's a hard hit, single to left, however. An RBI and a run scored for the Panthers. Hermitage feeling it. And then back to the mound, straight up cheese. Nice fastball, good velo on that one. Strike out, sit him down, and then full defense. Got a uh, man from first and second in a rundown. But they forgot about the guy coming home from third. And Ryko scores form of number 18, Malachi Saunders. They do get the out between first and second. Still, though, Henrico on the scoreboard. Down 6-1, to one, however, and then Hermitage just kept it going with the arm. Nicely done. Good pitching outing for the Panthers, and their bats just kept going. That's going to eat up. The shortstop runner comes around the score on that one, and it was all Hermitage from this point forward. I'd show you the scoreboard. It was just not on on this particular night. It's early in the season, folks. Give it some time. Give it a game or two. And then the walk, that's going to lead to a run. RBI, bases loaded, walk. Biggest enemy of pitchers and the defense as well. That's too high ball for that. will lead to another run scored. All in all, Hermitage kind of turned on the faucet and forgot to turn it off on offense. They put a crooked number up. 17-1 is your final. Tennis anyone? Two of the top girls tennis teams in the area, if not the state, have an early season matchup when Freeman heads to deep run. Plus, we hit the pitch for guys soccer where Tucker tries to tame Henrico. That's next. Happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Welcome back to Sportswire. Tennis at deep run on a windy day. Wind would play a factor. Two of the best in the region, maybe even the state. Page Suter in the front court, dropping it like it's hot. Drop shot. Works wonders against Rosalind Kara in the far court for deep run. Freeman, of course. Back to back to back state championships, and their number one page suitor was showing why. Back to back points there. This one, point. Rosalind Kara, nicely done, right down the line. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But this day belonged to Paige. Nice little slice on. Uh, Kara's shot there, though. Definitely working with the wind in her favor on that, but net play even better. It, getting Kara out of position was Suter, and she would get the win. 6 3, 6 4. So, Douglas Freeman wins at the number ones. That serve for Freeman in the front court at the number twos by Jocelyn Ginsburg could not be corralled. Ginsburg on the serve, taking on Ann Douglas Council of Douglas Freeman in the far court there. Back and forth they go. Nice little volley. 
And eventually, whoo, that one had some mustard on it as Douglas Council gets the point. Back to the serve for Deep Run and Ginsburg. And Ginsburg would be the beneficiary in the opening set, taking a 6 3 win. But then it was Council on the comeback trail, winning the second set 6 0. And then in the tiebreakers, boop, she gets the point right there. Nicely done. Oh, no, she does not. What a great lob on the part of Ginsburg to get the point. Like I said, she won 6-3 in the first set, lost the second 6-0, and lost in the tiebreakers 10-7. Still a tremendous match in that one. The number threes, really close as well. Front court, Sammy Sullivan of Deep Run taking on Freeman's Caroline Frank. Frank gets the point right there. Frank in control in the first set that she would win 6-2, but it's best out of three. Back we go. Some great net play here, but could not get that one to go, could not get that one to count. Point goes to Sullivan. And then Sullivan at the net. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. She wins the first set, as I said, 6-2, but loses the second 6-2 and loses in the tiebreaker 16-14 to the number four as we go. It's Madison Geeky versus Hannah Park of Deep Run. Point goes to Madison. Madison looking good in this one in the front court for Douglas Freeman. And that shot is going to go too wide and, of course, too long. So point to Madison and Freeman. They would win at number four. As a matter of fact, they would sweep the singles. One, two, three, through six. Oh, well, that was a good point for deep run right there by Hannah Park. And they would lose one match in doubles, but Freeman takes care of the match. And they win this one going away. 8-1. Good fun. Boys soccer at Henrico. Tucker playing the away team role and playing the team of the aggressor. That shot just goes wide. Oh, what a boot. Did not quite connect by Ryan Sumner, but moments later, another stop by Henrico's keeper. He would be busy. Here comes Tucker again this time. Nice ball in, and it just goes wide. Sumner, good delivery, could not finish on the other side. Number 12 could not put the biscuit in the basket, as they would say. Still first half, still no score. Wouldn't stay that way for long. Henrico's got it, but no. Right back to the forward in the offense. He shoots, he scores! Donnie Hernandez puts the Tigers on the board first. They would have a 1-0 lead. Trying to get the equalizer. Check this out, Henrico coming around, firing! Keeper is right there in the hot, bright sun. Well, cold, bright sun. He makes the save, and then it was back on offense for Tucker. Really unselfish play in this one. Really nice passing. Pretty crisp on the offensive end. And again, this shot. Oh, he bent it to the short corner of that net. But uh, Johnny on the spot was uh, Warriors keeper still, though, putting pressure on offensively. And this time, fires right between the wiggets. It's a nutmeg. He shoots. He scores. Iverson Garcia and Tucker double their lead at 2-0. Still in the first half. Looking for more. Tigers, nice pass, fires, he scores, but oh, he's offside. So that does not quite count. Second half, still 2-0. Check it out once again. I talked about the patience here. Patience is a virtue. Passes in, fires, finds the back of the net. He shoots, he scores. Well done. Goal, Tucker. They would have a 3-0 lead, or it was more where that came from, because just moments later, once again, number 10, unselfish. Garcia finds his teammate, fires, finds the back of the net. That would make it 4-0, J.R. Tucker, and that would be all that they would need in this one. They get the win and the clean sheet. Tucker, 4, Henrico, 0. 
That is your final. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. Follow us on X and watch us on YouTube. I can't wait to see y'all next time on Sportswire.